the chilling details that were reported on this Friday night's Dateline were shocking. This guy's accused of murdering four Idaho college students. Most Americans have seen the story by this point. Three young women and and one young man, the boyfriend of one of the young women, while sleeping in their beds um, last November, November 2022. Here's the suspect, Kohlberger. Um, the, The defendant was said to have sneaked into their a house in the middle of the night with a knife, a K-bar knife, and have he sliced them to death. He stabbed them to death, all four of them. There were two other roommates inside the house, one of whom we believe slept through the whole thing, one of whom uh, has told the police she woke up at some point and saw him leave the house. She had heard some sort of oral exchange, we believe, between the defendant and one of the victims, where he said something to the effect of, it's okay, you know, I'll, I'll keep you safe or I'll protect you or something to that effect. Someone said that. And now he faces uh, the court to figure out what, what's what. They were going to have a preliminary hearing where the prosecution was going to have to show all of its cards. They decided not to do that. They just got a grand jury indictment, which prevents the prosecution from having to put witness after witness on the stand and allowing the defense to cross-examine them. I think that was a wise move. But what's come out, what's come out now is shocking, including you guys. The biggest revelation from the Dateline to me was that this guy apparently bought a K-bar knife and sheath. Remember, they found the sheath of the knife knife that was used by the murderer at the scene. They found him buying one of these knives and its accompanying sheath seven months before the murders on Amazon. Beth, on Amazon. What? Well, I mean, it is seven months before, so I suppose the defense will say that's too attenuated, but it is good evidence that they can now place a knife in his possession, something that if he bought, presumably he was possessing, not giving away, and uh, consistent with what they believe to be the murder weapon, although the actual knife has never been recovered. The sheath has been, though. And another detail that came out, if I can, uh, if I if I may, uh, please, is that please. he apparently... Um, burglarized another home in the past uh, and sort of switched switched things around to just kind of play uh, psychological games with the owners, not really stealing anything. And when I was reading about that and hearing about it, it immediately made me think about the Pettit family that was killed in 2007 in Cheshire, Connecticut. One of the two murderers, the, the house that they were killed and then the house was burned down, the father, the doctor survived. Um, oh, one of the two, Joshua Komarsarjevsky, was a cat burglar who used to do just that. He would burglarize people's homes, switch their paintings, sometimes steal things, not always, but just mess with people's heads. And he perfected the skill of burglarizing. And then he committed the ultimate act of raping and killing these two young uh, members and the two young girls and and their mother. But you got to wonder if Koberger also was sort of perfecting his burglary skills so he could stealthily get in um, homes without detection. Mm. The. I got to tip my hat to the Dateline team. That They were my favorite people at NBC for what it's worth. I love the Dateline team. They were just total pros and kind people. Um, Keith Morrison, my God, like the greatest. He was born to do the job he's doing, is he not? In any event, um, they report that he, there's a couple things here. He broke into, this is the case you're referencing, I assume, a mm-hmm. female colleague's home. Yeah, a, he broke into a female colleague's home months before the murders. Um, according to a source with Dateline, he's considered a strong suspect in this case. They don't have the proof positive yet, but this is all brand new. Allegedly broke into the apartment of a female colleague. This is while he was at Washington State University. He'd only gotten there months before. He, he'd only started his graduate studies program there. I think he got there in August. The murders were committed in November. So he didn't have a lot of time to start you know, this alleged crime spree. Um, allegedly broke into the apartment of a female colleague there at Washington State University, moved items around as part of an elaborate ploy to manipulate her, according to Dateline. He befriended her months before the murders, then broke into her apartment, jostled things around, did not take anything. They write, it worked. This is via the New York Post. The unnamed woman then asked him to install a video surveillance system. This is so sick and creepy, you guys. Which authorities believe he could have accessed remotely since he knew her Wi-Fi password. This is crazy, Peter. So can you imagine how this young woman is feeling now? The, the reaction she must have had when she realized, when we all heard that shocking news that they, they arrested a suspect in this case of the four murders, and she found out it was this guy who had installed the cameras. This is crazy, and it, was, it would be totally consistent with what eventually happened inside that other house a couple months later, if true. 
Yeah, I mean, I I hate to be the one to throw cold water on some of it, but I think no, this that's, that's what you're here for. When, yeah, I think this happens, and this is kind of another aspect of this case that I think is a really big deal, and that's the gag order, the non dissemination order, where these leaks are not supposed to happen, and sometimes when the leaks are not supposed to happen. Uh, sometimes there are reaches and there are stretches and we hear if he's a suspect somewhere else, now it fits into his serial killer profile perfectly. And it proves that not only did he commit these crimes, but he committed that crime. There is another way to look at it, that he was at least a trustworthy enough for this female student to ask him of all the people she could have asked to put the system in her home. It also begs the question that if he already had that access to her home and he had practiced it before and he had set up a security camera and had this information on her, why not choose her as the potential victim? I'm not saying he didn't do that. And I'm definitely not saying he didn't do the Idaho murders because it seems like there is a lot of evidence. I just caution everybody to jump, not jump to conclusions. Wait till we see what actual evidence comes out because there is a gag order and wait to see if those other similar bad acts like breaking into other young females' apartments comes into this trial because I think it would be relevant if they can prove by clear and convincing evidence on the other bad acts that he did, in fact, commit those crimes. And then you start piling up evidence that proves his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. I'm just not there yet piling on with all of these additional things we're hearing. Hmm. Beth, the other piece of new information, um, <laughs> this is also interesting, is that, you know, he was this TA at Washington State University where he was getting his graduate degree at the time he allegedly committed these murders. Now we learn again via NBC that he had been fired. He'd been fired from that job in December. So it would have been right after the murders. Uh, they're reporting that he, he was counseled over a verbal altercation he had with a professor and his conduct had been investigated with women. They were investigating his conduct with women around the time of the killings. He was ultimately fired from his job as a teaching assistant in December before his arrest at his parents' home. In one of those instances, he was accused of following a female student to her car. In the case of the female students, the university's investigation did not find him guilty of any wrongdoing. Clearly, they had an investigation open on him. They cited uh, the potential unsatisfactory performance as a TA, including his failure to meet the norms of professional behavior in his interactions with the faculty. Beth, what we're seeing here, in my view, is a pattern of behavior leading up to these horrendous acts. Right. His things seem to be uh, spiraling in his life if he's losing the TA position. Was he planning something like this? I don't know, but he did have um, odd social interactions with women. Um, it has not been established that he actually knew the victims in this case. Uh, for And for him to commit the ultimate act of four murders, is that his first, I mean, is that his first crime? Because it's pretty severe. Uh, generally, we see escalation in crime. Certainly things are not going well, perhaps, in, in some parts of his life, but I, I don't really have an explanation for why he would kill four people. And certainly we don't know a motive either. Mm, but we've we've heard other problems with women that he he didn't do well with women. There's been speculation that he might have been a so-called incel, involuntarily celibate man who has never been with a woman, but not because he doesn't want to be. Um, now we see here negative interactions with women at Washington State. There was an earlier report that he had negative interactions with women at a bar to the point where the bartender or the guy who runs the bar said, I don't want you coming here anymore. You, something's off off with you. Um, then there was another report out that he had yet another pullover in his car. Uh, this is in addition to the ones that we already knew about after the murders. This one was before where um, he was sort of pushed by this cop. But in any event, that happened right by the house in which the murders took place prior to the murders. It's just like a lot of circumstantial evidence. It doesn't, alone, none of these proves anything together. To me, it paints the picture of a man who had issues, serious issues with women. Junk science. That's what the doctor called many of those fruit and vegetable supplements on the market. Junk science because they use extracts of common produce department fruits and vegetables with few health benefits. But I want to tell you about Field of Greens. Field of Greens is different. They use whole organic fruit and vegetables, not a watered down supplement. And it's backed by a better health promise, which I'm going to tell you about. Each ingredient in Field of Greens was scientifically chosen to support vital organs like heart, lungs, and kidney health. Others 
support your immune system, your blood pressure, metabolism, and healthy weight loss. Their better, better Health Promise is simple. The next time you're at the doctor for a checkup, if the doctor does not say you're looking healthier than before, you get your money back. That's a deal right there. So let me get you started with 15% off. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use my promo code MK. That's promo code MK at fieldofgreens.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.